day 24. So if you've been with me so far, you're doing fine. <coughs> Just a few more days to go, and you and I are done. <coughs> so let's go to take day 24. Please tell me I have a... Yes, I do have a calculator. So, again, you've seen me do these and eliminate multiple choice answers that you can you can see right away that makes no sense you know and improve your chances so number one george writes the expression 0.88x uh, why is this not working oh, here we go. 0.88x to represent the final cost of a shirt which statement about the original cost of the shirt x is true so remember so if you're multiplied by 88, that's, you're multiplying x times, and I'm just going to write this by 88% of something, right? Which is the price of the shirt. Which means, one thing here, that A, the shirt was discounted by 12%. So imagine a t-shirt, and they have a huge sign that says, hey, we're giving you a 12% discount today. Right? So if you have a t-shirt, and I'll put a, make a, uh, what do you call it, a little design here 100 percent of the t-shirt this is zero dollars that you're going to pay and this is whatever x amount of dollars now let's say you had a 12 percent discount so it'd be 10 off and 12 your new price would be 88 percent of the shirt whatever the price is 100 percent of the shirt you're not paying for the full price anymore you're paying for this value over here right which is 88 percent of the value so one thing that could have happened is definitely you could have uh, what do you call the t-shirt uh, had a discount of 12%. So let's see if I make any sense here. To get the final cost of the shirt, the original cost of the shirt is decreased by 12%. That looks okay. To, cut, to find the final cost of the shirt, the original cost of the shirt is decreased by 88%. That's not true, right? To find the cost of the shirt, the original cost of the shirt is increased by... No, so that... Right away, so I'm again, and I, and I didn't do what I said in the beginning was... If you should have read this first, and I should have read this for you. So anything that says increased, you could have already eliminated, right? So now you were between something that decreased by 12% or something that decreased by 88%. So in this case, definitely something that was decreased by 12%, which means that you have to pay for 88% of the shirt. Okay, so the answer is A. <coughs> Anna's having a dinner at the restaurant. Her bill before sales tax and tip is $23.20. Okay. The restaurant adds sales tax of 7%, and she lives 18, leaves 18% 18 uh, on the tip. Based on the new total, what's Anna's total cost? So I don't like this question um, only because she's tipping. This is what the question is saying. So here's $23.20. Let's multiply that by 0 0.07, right, which is their tax. So if you multiply that, 33.0.0, uh, 23.2 times 0 0.07, which, you know, I should turn the lights on, times 0 0.07, because I can't see. Her tax is $1.62. So if you add the food plus the tax, you're going to get that her new total is $24.82. Now, the question is saying that Anna leaves at 18% tip based on the new total. So based on this, she's tipping on the food and the tax, which is not correct. Why would you want to, what do you call, uh, tip your waiter? Not that we have anything against the waiter, but, you know, uh, the, you're tipping them on a price that includes the tax, which is honestly not correct. But th that's what the question said. So... Now, if the new total is 2482, including the tax, let's find out what 18% of that is. So we're going to multiply that by 0 0.18. And 24.82 times 0 0.18 means that her tip is going to be $4.47 rounded. So now, that was the new total plus the tip. So we get $9, 12, $29.29. .29. .29. And we have that answer right here. But again, you really have to read the question, and had I honestly read it carefully, I would not have selected this question. Two, 
use a distributed property to write an expression that's equivalent to this. Okay, so let me just make it a little bigger. Well, that's not that difficult. Right, so we're going to use a distributed property, which means this guy over here is going to multiply this and then multiply that. So the first two, and it's going to be positive, x times, so I'm going to just do this on top, x times one third. You can put x over 1 if you like. x times 1 is x. And at the bottom, 1 times 3 is 3. So that first is equal to x over 3. Second one is positive times a negative, so it's definitely need a negative sign. And then x times y is just xy. Final answer. So here is Cindy. She's rolling a two-sided number cube, a six-sided number cube, one at a time. The table below shows all the possible combinations of Cindy's two rows. It's like a different version of a tree diagram. So she can get a 1 and a 1, a 1 and a 2, a 1 and a 3, a 1 and a 4, a 1 and a 5, a 1 and a 6, right? So, and if she rows the first die and she lands in the 2, the second would be a 1, so she can get a 2 and a 2, 2 and a 3, 2 and a 4, 2 and a 5, 2 and a 6, and so forth. So what's the probability that Cindy rows an even number first and an odd number second? So let's look at all the even numbers first. So uh, let's look at this row, right? These have all two, 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 two. So on her first die, they all came out as even. This one also came out as even, and this one came out as even, right? So you were looking at for even number first and not odd number second. So let's look at these. Let's focus on these three rows. So two and one is even and odd, so that's okay. This is okay, even and odd. So we're looking for anything that's even and odd, even and odd. Uh, what if it was a 4? 4 and 1, that's even and odd. 4 and 3, that's even and odd. And 4 and 5 also works. 6 and 1 works. 6 and 3 works. 6 and 5 works. So if you notice, all these, all the combinations are circled. The first number are all evens, and the second number are all odds. Am I forgetting any? I don't think so. So the probability of that happening, well, how many total combinations were there? There were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then there were 6. 36 possibilities, and out of the 36 possibilities, we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 out of 36, or 1 fourth. She had a 1 fourth chance of rolling a two dice where the first one was even and the second one was odd. Which number is equivalent to 8 over 9? Now, oh, that's just again a calculator question. 8 divided by 9, so just put that in, and then if you did what I did, you get 8.8888888 forever and ever, or can we, we just rewrite this like this? Right, so the short version is this. The number that repeats is the 8. So we put the bar notation of the 8. Okay, so this one. 0 0.89 is not the same as this, so that's garbage. This is garbage right away, and this is garbage right away. So the only one that makes any true sense is 3. 6. A something, a logo on a t-shirt, it's placed on a t-shirt, the logo is the shape of a circle, here is a circle, and the diameter is 7.6, I'm going to write 7.6, the diameter, the line that goes across, right, and it says, what's the area of this circle, well, A equals pi r squared, we need the radius, so if the whole thing is 7.6, that means that this is 3.8, and half of it is 3.8, right, so the radius so here I'm going to write diameter 7.6, radius 3.8. We need to use the radius to find the area. <coughs> A equals pi times 3.8 to the second power. So let's do that. So 3.8 times 3.8, that's 14.44. We're going to multiply that by pi times pi, enter, and in my calculator, you get 45.36 rounded to the nearest hundreds, and these guys rounded to the nearest tenth. So C is the answer we want. Okay, and make sure that this was supposed to be centimeters squared. Seven. Susan wrote. Susan can com can complete one third of a homework assignment in half an hour, one fourth of an hour. So let me put one third of homework and one-fourth of an hour. So how much of her homework can she finish in one hour? Okay. Um, again, this is easy. Multiply by the reciprocal, or four over one, and do the same thing on top. 
one, this one and this one simplifies to one, this one and this one also simplifies to one. So <coughs> that's how we get one hour over here. Right? So on top, one times four is four, three times one is three. We have our answer, it's four thirds or yeah, right here. It even changed it to a mixed number, which I love. Thank you. Uh, so she can finish fourth and four over thirds uh, of her homework. Eight. Middle school has a fundraiser. The two line plots show how much money in dollars are raised by a random sample of 10 students in each seventh and eighth graders. Okay. All right. So here's the seventh grade. How much they, 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 they collected. Right. So one seventh grader got a hundred dollars. Two seventh graders got eighty dollars each. Another seventh grader got sixty dollars, seventy dollars, fifty dollars, and so forth. Eighth graders. One eighth grader got seventy-five dollars. A bunch of eighth graders got fifty dollars. Another bunch got thirty dollars each. One eighth grader got twenty-five, etc. So, which statement correctly compares the data into in the two line plots? So we're talking about line plots, okay? So, a the seventh grader students did a better job with the fundraiser because the interquartile range. Now, interquartile range, the IQR. When do we look? When do we see IQRs? We see IQRs when you need to lay a box plot, right? Does this look a like a box plot? No, it's a line plot. And it says which statement compares the data in the two line plots. So this is asking us to compare using the IQR, but we don't have the IQR here because it's not a box plot. So I would throw this in the garbage. And B, likewise, the eighth graders, eighth graders did a better job of the, with the fundraiser because the interquartile range of the eighth grader, whatever. I throw that in the garbage as well, okay? Because we don't have that information, okay? And I don't think there. It's just a multiple choice. They're not asking you to create a box plot, okay? The min, the max, Q1, Q2, Q3. And no, they're not asking you to do that. So let's move on. Three. The seventh graders did a better job as a fundraiser because the mean and the medium amount raised by the seventh graders are more than the mean and the medium amounts raised by the eighth graders. Is that true? Well, the median for the seventh grade, well, let's cross one from each side, two, three, three, four, four, and the medium is between, it's going to be 52.5, right? So in here, let's see the median for the eighth graders, cross, 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 and the medium is going to be between 45 and 50, which is 47.5, so definitely the median for the seventh grade is bigger, so that's true. And the mean now is so. Let me erase everything. So think about mean for a second without actually having to add 25 plus 25 plus 30 plus 35 plus 50 plus 55 and add all and then divide by 10. Without doing that, think about your think about test scores. Pretend these were your test scores over here, and this was somebody else's test scores. Who do you think did better? Okay, so. Um, by looking at it, I can tell you that the mean here on the 8th grader would be somewhere here. And the mean in the 7th grade would be a little bit higher. So uh, if you're not comfortable with that, you can always add them and then divide by 10. So I'm going to agree with C right now. Let me just look at D. The 8th grader students did a better job. No, they didn't do a better job because the mean... The median is already lower so the only one that makes and even if you didn't want to add them and it's like oh I don't want to add all 10 numbers and divide by 10 to see which just compare the median because here it says that the seventh grade letter D says that the median for the eighth grade was higher than the median for the seventh grade so we already know that that's not true so the only one that's left over is C okay. nine Fernando's playing basketball he has made 18 out of 30 attempts. At this rate, how many of Fernando's next 50 free throws should he expect to make? So right now, he's shooting this much. He makes 18 out of every 30. All right, so that's the probability of he making a free throw. It's 18 out of 30, so that's his probability. Now, we're going to use that to make a prediction, right? Before he throws his next 50, how many of those do we expect him to make? So let's just multiply that by 50. Okay, so we got 
multiply that, um, and you're going to get, and if I turn my calculator before I punch in my numbers, that will help. And we're expecting to make 30. So on the next 50 shots that he makes, he'll probably make 30. Probably. Okay. 11. <coughs> The trapezoid has an area of 88 square inches. The length of one of the bases is 10. The height of the trapezoid is 8. The equation can be used to find the length in inches of the unknown base B. So what is the length in inches of the unknown base of the trapezoid? So can they give you this equation? And they're asking us to solve it to find the value of this guy right here, one of the bases. So 88 equals 0 0.5 times, and I'm going to put in parentheses, times 8 times 10 plus b. So, first thing we can do is see if we can make this a little simpler. This is all this times this times this, right? So let's multiply. What's 0 0.5 times 8? That's 4. And then let me write 10 plus b. Now this becomes an equation with parentheses, right? So 88, let's do this really properly, 4 times 10 is 40. 4 times b is 4b plus, because they're both positive. That's a simple two-step equation. Here's my variable b. It's being multiplied by 4. Added 40. Gives me 88. To do use inverse operations, I'm going to do minus 40 and then divide by 4. So let's follow these instructions. So minus 40 over here. Minus 40 over here. That gives me 48 here. These two divide by. And 4b comes down, right? Divide by 4, yeah, divide by 4, and cross that out, 48 divided by 4 is 12, and there's our answer. Ten, a line representing a proportional relationship is shown in the coordinate grid. What is the constant proportionality of the relationship? So we need to find k, right? The constant proportionality, remember, is k equals y over x, right? So pick a point. Not any point. Pick a point that's like exactly on a corner like this, right? So that you can get its at exact value. And to me, that looks like I can pick. Is this one? Yeah, that looks okay. You could have picked this one. That looks okay too, or even this one. So either of these three points would have been okay. Well, this point's not okay because I don't know what the value is. I know this is two, but I have no idea what it is on the y-axis. It's like 0 0.7 or something. So don't pick a value that you can't. Tell what uh, don't take a point, don't take a point, you can't find the value. So let's pick this point. This point is called three comma one, right? Three on the x-axis and one on the y-axis. So three one. This is my x, this is my y. So k is going to be y over x, y is one, so k equals one and x equals three. So there's my constant of proportionality, one third. Is that a multi choice? Nope, you just have to find it. Twelve. Point P and Q are located on the number line. Which expression represents the distance between point P and Q? Okay, so now, guaranteed that a lot of students in New York City will just do this. Well, the distance is easy. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the distance between point Q and P is 7 units. Well, true if the number line was going by 1s, right? But it's not, it's going by twos. So this should count as two spaces, two units, sorry. Another two units, so four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. So the actual distance is fourteen, right? So now you have to come over here and figure out which one of these four actually equals to fourteen. Let's take out the obvious ones out. Eight minus six is two. Right, if you do the, up, the inside the absolute value, eight minus six is two, and absolute value of two is not fourteen, so that's garbage, right? Over here, six minus eight, six minus eight is negative two, right? And is the absolute value negative two fourteen? No, that's garbage. So now you're between the two more that looks like it's going to be fourteen. Eight minus minus six. So let me write this this way, and if you change that tradition, it becomes eight plus, and the opposite of negative 6 is 6, that gives you 14. So now we have to take the absolute value of 14. What's the absolute value of 14? It's 14. Here's our winner. 
right? Because because uh, nothing. And this one doesn't work because it's negative eight minus six. Think about what that means. It's negative eight plus. Hang on a second. Plus negative six. And that also works because that's negative 14. And negative, absolute value of negative 14 Absolute value of negative 14 is 14, so what am I doing wrong? This is negative 14, which equals 14. So, um, hmm, hang on. Plus 6 equals 14. Huh. Hang on a second. Let me check. Bonds. Well, the answer is B, but I don't know why it's not A as well. So, they both equal to 14. So, which expression represents the distance between P and Q? Um, this is 14, and this is also 14. So, unless they messed up, Okay, so don't, if you got A and B, I would have been okay with that. Although, on the test, you can't put A and B, so this one, hopefully they realize it was a mistake that they made, unless I'm making one and I can't see, because 8 plus 6 is 14, and negative 8 plus negative 6 is also negative 14, and they both, if you take the absolute value of both, it also equals 14. Huh. Don't know. 13. The community center is offering a discount on swimming passes. The regular cost for swimming pass is 6 bucks. Okay. Jake, Lisa, and Manuel each buy a swimming pass at the community center. So after the discount, the total cost for the three passes is fourteen forty. What is the discount the community center is offering? So, alright. This is this. So new minus original over original, right? So we want to find out what the discount was. So, so if there were three people, and each person is six dollars, right? Six dollars, and you multiply by three, they paid eighteen dollars. But the community center said, no, we're going to give you a discount, and your final price is going to be fourteen dollars and forty cents. So, <clears throat> the new price that's given to them is fourteen forty. The original price is what it was 18. They were supposed to be 18 over the 18 dollars, and we can figure out what the percent of decrease was. Um, so it's 14.40 uh, minus 18. Enter divided by 18 equals so 0 0.2. And you can see it's a negative, but don't worry about the negative. It just means that it has it was a decreasing price, and it's obviously a decrease. So 0 0.2 turned into a percent becomes 20 percent, and we have it. 14, which expression is equivalent to that? Okay, so we have to do a bit of a distributed property. So this with this, this times that, and then the 4.5 times this, and the 4.5 times that. So just be careful with your signs. So first one, 2.5 times x is 2.5x. 2.5 positive minus times a negative is a negative, and 2.5 times 1 is 2.5. Done. Next, it's positive 4.5 times negative x, so it's on the negative 4.5x and positive times negative 2 it's going to be negative right and 4.5 times 2 is going to be nine. can I combine like terms I can I can combine this fellow over here with minus 4.5 and then the other two I'll combine so I know it's going to be something x and 2.5 minus 4.5 is just going to be my negative and the other one, negative 2.5, remember you take the sign preceding the term, so the minus sign belongs to negative 2.5. So in your calculator, 2.5 minus 9 is negative 11.5. And we have our answer. 
Denise takes a scale model of a train for a science, makes a scale model for a train for, of a train for a science project. The actual train length is 80 feet. So here's my train, the real one, my real train, 80 feet. And the small one, the scale model of her measures what? Five feet. Not that small, but the diameter of the largest wheel of the tr of the largest wheel of the actual train, sixty inches. So there's a train over here in this uh, the trains on the wheel, right? And it says that the diameter here is sixty inches on the real train, sixty inches. And then obviously, in her scale model train, the train also has wheels, right? And in that, and we want to know what this, using the same scale, what is the what? What is the, what is the diameter in inches of the, of the, of the, of the, of the wheel in her scale model? Well, what's the scale here? It's 80 feet, 5 feet, right? So it's, what's the relationship here? Uh, the scale factor it would be 17. Let's divide by 17. All right? No. No, not. Uh, hang on. 16. Yeah. All right? So 80 divided by 16 equals 5. So the scale factor is 16. 16 times smaller. So the wheel is also going to be 16 times smaller. So 60 divided by 16 equals 3.75. Yay, I got it right. So the diameter of the toy train, or not, yeah, well, the scale model train is going to be 3.75 feet, inches. Uh, Antonio randomly surveyed 20 people at a bus stop on Friday and Saturday morning. He asked how old each person was. Wow. The table shows the mean, medium, and mold for the data he collected on Friday and Saturday. Okay, so in on Friday, the mean average was 22.5. The median was 18. The mold, most of the people he asked were 16. On Saturday, the mean was 28.8, the median was 22.5, and the mold 18, which means the most people he asked on Saturday morning were 18-year-olds. Okay, I mean, everybody was 18, but there were, that was the most popular age. Which conclusion could you make about the ages of the people that ride the bus? Every person that rides a bus is older than 16. Every person, every person that rides a bus is older than the age of 16. No, I don't know that. Okay. I can have a, a, what do you call, younger than 16, mold. <clears throat> Just the fact that I had people who are 16, this says that everyone was older than 16. No, some people were 16 even. Every person that rides the bus is younger than the age of 29. Also not true. I don't know that. There could have been an outlier who is, I don't know, somebody who is 45, 50 years old. You know, I don't know unless I'm looking at the data. I can't tell that, right? Because there's a bunch of numbers here, right? A bunch of people he asked, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I don't know what, what, what was the highest number here, okay? The oldest person or the youngest person. I know the mold was 16, so there's definitely a lot of 16s that, for Friday. I know the mold was 18, a lot of 18s on, on Saturday morning. The median number in the middle was 22.5 on one day and 18 but I don't know what these extremes were so I could have had a young very young person a very old person so most people that ride the bus are older than the age of 25 most people no not most people most people here were 16 most people here were 18 so that's also so just by default this is your most people that ride the bus are younger than the age of 25 yeah most people that rode the bus were younger than 25 on Saturday, and most people that rode the bus were younger than 25 on Saturday morning. And I can say that because most is mold, right? Kimberly cuts a piece of a piece, 
piss, <laughs> piece, sorry, uh, a, cuts a piece of aluminum foil to fit in the bottom of a circular baking pan. All right, so here's your baking pan. The bottom of the pan has a circumference of 10 pi, so let me just try. Here's the circumference, is 10 pi. What's the area? So I need to find the area. So if I have the circumference, I can find diameter, right? So let's do that. C equals pi times D. Circumference is 10 pi equals pi times D. I can cut this pi and cut this pi, or divide both sides by pi. And my diameter is uh, it's 10, which means my radius is 5, right? Half of the diameter. So if this whole thing is 10, I know that the radius is 5. Area equals pi r squared. Now that I have the radius, I can find the area. It equals pi times 5 to the second power. And that's going to give me 25 and 25 pi. And if you look at your multiple choice answer, it does, it does leave your answer in terms of pi, which is squared, by the way. So we don't even have to go any further and just do that. Okay, that was day 20-something, 4.